Hi there, this is Aaron. Today is Saturday the 19th of October and it's day 28 on the allotment. It is another grey autumn day. You can probably see from the sky up there there is uh, a lot of cloud cover. It's very damp. I, there are rain clouds overhead. It's not raining at the moment but uh, it's certainly been raining overnight. So I don't know how much of this day I'm going to get. Uh, depending on how good the weather is, is how much we're going to get done. But uh, there are a lot of things that I need to attend to. So uh, let's turn the camera around and see where we start. And then let's see where we get to later. I'm going to start with my broad beans because one, two, three, not that one, not that one, four, not that one yet, not that one yet, five, six, seven, yeah, that one is there, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 of my broad beans have come through, which is fantastic. Um, we are just at the end of the third week from planting them, and they have gone woof, which is fantastic. So that's almost, and I, th I think the ones that haven't come through, I mean, I can see cracks in the soil, so I think they are trying to come through. So that is pretty much, you know, very close to 100% success rate with these broad beans. So that's fantastic. What isn't fantastic is to look at this broad bean because, yeah, you can see there's blackness on there. I was asked, you know, can you actually see the flies on there? Now, if I sort of come in close, those are not eggs, those are not flies, that is just an unhappy plant that is becoming progressively more unhappy. So I don't know whether to take Kay's advice, it was Kay that said pull it out or whether you know I sort of continue to persevere and see if it recovers. Um, it's sort of yeah, a bit of a point of honour with this really because well <laughs> It was one of the first things that came up. I planted this on my first ever weekend here on the allotment. And uh, yeah, it was a real sort of uh, mark of, uh, yes, I can do this. That I'd done some work, I'd dug a trench. Admittedly, the trench was really, really bad. Um, but yeah, this is the one thing that I put in the ground there that has survived. And so, yeah, I, I'll, I don't want to give up without a fight, but you know, I'm not sure if this fight is already lost. Now over here with my alliums, um, this is really great actually because there's some of the onions, I don't know if you can see in there, there's some of the onions through the netting that are starting to sprout. Now these are the white onions. I can't say the same yet for the red onions I put in. Um, but these white onions, yeah, they are ready to rock and roll. So uh, I'm going to try and get some more of those in the ground today. Um, because uh, quite obviously they grow very quickly as well. We've also got carrots in here. Uh, no sign of the carrots yet, but I didn't expect to see that happen. Uh, the reason that I can see yeah, the onions is because, of course, they're poking out the top. And so uh, they're getting uh, little green shoots on already, and that's in a week. Over here I've got more raspberries that are ready to pull off, and there's, there's quite a few on there. Um, this plant's doing really, really well throughout. You can see them here, here, here. Uh, there's more raspberries around this side, um, and there's more raspberries for me on the little one. So uh, these are great. It was really interesting watching Andy's video before I came down, which talks about the different types of raspberries. So based on what he was saying, I think what I've got is a primocane, and that they are um, late fruiting. So an autumn primocane raspberry, I think, is what I've got. Uh, the question is what I'd do with it now. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll look all that up. Um, I've just sort of started to get the terminology. I'll look it all up and uh, work out how I'm supposed to look after this. So uh, thank you very much, Andy, for that. Greatly appreciated. We can now see the uh, cabbages and... Well, that one's fairly pathetic. Um, the other two that I moved are pretty pathetic. Um, I have no idea if that will get a heart or if it's absolutely knackered. Um, my big boy 
cabbage I, I'm a bit I, I'm a bit disappointed with because I thought that was going to heart up more than it did um, at the moment it's sort of got pretensions of being a little gem um, but uh, it's certainly no bigger than that uh, and of course this one at the end is uh, really not any good at all I am in two minds what to do here whether to just pull them all out and shove them in the compost I am aware that things are eating these and are not eating anything else so as a sacrifice crop that kind of works um, but of course what I could do especially now that I've seen that these onions um, do start especially the white onions uh, do start to take off very well and very quickly is just pull it out and put something proper in uh, because uh, yeah here we are in the third week of October and that is the best I can do for a cabbage it's, it's quite pathetic really so uh, I may um, pull these out dig this over and get some more um, onions in so uh, that's something that may happen today the new arrival is this which is rhubarb now this arrived as a one year crown from Blackmore, uh, these people, blackmore.co.uk. Um, I think these are the people that I've also ordered the currants from, but the currants haven't arrived yet. Now this is really interesting because this arrived um, without the earth and um, without the pot, just in a box, um, nicely packaged and uh, so uh, instructions. It was quite interesting actually because there are general instructions what you do with um, their young plants and they say put it in water and then there's special rhubarb instructions that say don't put this in water so I very nearly made a huge mistake there but uh, managed not to so the the variety of this is Gaskins Perpetual uh, which sounds like a really really nice rhubarb so uh, what we're going to do it's it's actually in situ sort of uh, on, on the pallet at the moment and I'm going to use the pallet as a guide to uh, dig an area a metre square, get all of the cooch grass out from there so that um, my rhubarb can go in today um, and I've also got some compost to go in with it so that uh, hopefully we can uh, start to grow some rhubarb. The only thing that I'm slightly con concerned about is whether I planted this the right way round because it wasn't clear to me what was root and what wasn't. Now I picked the bit that looked most like root but I am aware I could have completely cocked this up. So uh, there it is. Uh, hopefully I didn't get it wrong. Hopefully. Um, if I did we've got to order another one. So for a rainy uh, autumn day that's not a bad set of things to greet me. Uh, there are raspberries that I can take home today. Um, I'm very, very pleased with the broad beans. I'm wondering whether what I should actually do is to cover these broad beans um, with a sort of a cider bottle with the, 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 the bottom cut off it, so to protect it because I mean, I can see from the other broad bean that, uh, you know, there is something lying in wait for them, whether it's a disease, whether it's black fly, um, it's difficult to tell. But, you know, I, I, I don't really want every broad bean I grow to end up dying because I don't know what to do with it when, when I should be protecting it. So I am considering putting um, a drinks bottle on each of them. Uh, other than that, I've got to get digging. I've got to get the rhubarb in. And I've also got to try and do some digging so that I can get some more onions in. So I'm going to get on with it and I'll talk to you later. Bye. I'm just pausing for a second because I think I might be about to make one of those really stupid mistakes. You know those things where it's 50-50 and you can get it right or wrong? And uh, I've got this huge habit of picking the wrong thing. I have a feeling I might be about to do that again. Let me show you something and then maybe somebody can answer a question for me. Well, we've actually been really, really busy. Um, you can see that uh, we've cleared an area. Um, it's, a, it's away, it's a good metre away from the black currants and uh, dug a hole and cleared it and dug it and make sure that uh, all the earth is really nice, pulled out all the cooch grass. So it's ready for the rhubarb to go in. The question is, 
have I done this right? Is that meant to be the root or is that meant to be the crown? Um, when it arrived, that looked as if you know, it was the thing that was supposed to grow up. But I'm just looking at it now and I'm wondering if this is the thing that's supposed to be going down. Um, if I've done something, I am going to put it in the ground, but if I've done something really stupid here, could somebody tell me without sort of saying anything too derogatory? <laughs> Thank you. My mother-in-law found this really interesting thing, which is um, solid compost that sort of comes dried out. You add three litres of water to it and it turns into 10 litres of compost. And given that I cycle around, this is actually, hopefully, going to really work for me. We've just added three litres, I think, three litres of water to the compost. I had to sort of guesstimate it, but I think it was fairly spot on. Um, and there's a brick in there that's inside the bag. Now, I've placed it inside um, one of my... Um, sort of uh, waterproof plastic tubs because uh, if it does all fall out then at least I won't lose it all but you can see that that little brick of condensed compost is actually starting to break up now so they say it'll be five minutes so uh, let's see how long it takes I had a chat with one of the old boys that's uh, on the allotment here and uh, he confirmed what I've started to suspect that yep I'd messed it up again so uh, he's uh, told me a little mantra to remember and uh, it might help you as well if you have trouble with these things. You probably don't, but in case you do. Okay, if you look at this, they say he has one head and two legs. And the two legs go down and the head faces up. Not head down as I'd placed him. But that's the mantra that he's told me. So uh, that's how you tell if uh, rhubarb is the right way up. Uh, hopefully I haven't destroyed it, so uh, um, just by, by doing this, hopefully uh, we, we, can, we can rescue it. So he's going in in a few minutes. Well, this is now after five minutes, and yeah, that's absolutely solid. Um, I've actually added a bit more water because I want the compost quite wet. Um, but I'm going to use this to uh, plant my rhubarb. So uh, this stuff is really, really good. And there we have it. My one task for the day is my rhubarb planted in the ground, hopefully now the right way up, hopefully undamaged by his experience of having his nose thrust in the dirt. Um, I made sure I didn't bury the crown, just like everybody says. Um, he's a, a good metre away from everything else. He's got a metre all around him so that he can do what he wishes. And hopefully he's going to do what he does best and give me some lovely rhubarb. There's not very much light left at all. So uh, I need to rush back um, so that uh, I get back before dark. <laughs> that was the one task that we did. So everything else is unchanged. I'll show you around next time to see uh, you know, what's happened since. But uh, that was day 28 on the allotment. I will see you next time. Bye.